Hey, you're watching with Wendy. Today I'm gonna to show you how I made a bomber. This tutorial should work for any bomber, but mine just happens to be white mesh with a monogram on the back. seen quite a few bombers lately and I just wanted to mix it up a little and make one that's white mesh. There are a lot of steps but it's really not too hard. You just need a sweater that fits you well to model as the base for the jacket. I have a link in the description box below. It has the written out steps and a couple more photos for you if you wanted to see the jacket for more angles. If you want to see how I did the monogram on the back of the jacket, just stick around to the end of the tutorial. It's super easy. Starting with the mesh fabric, I first folded it in half, lay on a sweater that I already owned and fits me great, and then cut all the way around leaving one centimeter extra. The sweater that I modeled this off of was a drop shoulder sweater, so the armhole is a little bit different than what you might be used to. With that same sweater, I cut out two matching front pieces that are symmetrical, again following the exact shape of the sweater, but leaving one centimeter extra all the way around. Then I cut down the middle to separate them into two symmetrical pieces. And finally, there's the sleeves. Again, I did this by folding the mesh in half, laying on the sweater sleeve and then tracing and cutting all the way around, leaving one centimeter extra on the bottom and sides. Moving on from the mesh, the other thing you'll need is a zipper. It has to be long enough to cover your entire front and opens at the bottom because otherwise you won't be able to get in and out of your jacket. You'll also need some knit tubing that is in a matching color. I have here all this white knitted tubing and with this we are ready to go. Put down the back piece with the right side facing up and then the two front pieces with the right sides facing down. So the right sides are touching. We're going to sew them together with a straight stitch along the two shoulders. Open that up so that you're looking at the top of the shoulder and then take the sleeves with them folded in half, lay them down so that they're symmetrically along that exact shoulder point. We're going to sew from there outwards to the front and outwards to the back using a straight stitch. When you're sewing over the shoulder, make sure that the raw edges of that shoulder seam are opened up completely and that will help your jacket lay flat when you're wearing it. When you're done going down the front and the back, here's how it's gonna look from the top. Next up, bring everything right sides together and sew all along the bottom edge of the sleeve and the side, sealing off the left and right side of the jacket. When you're getting to the armpit, make sure that that armpit seam is totally lined up. I usually start at that exact armpit seam and go down the side and then go down the sleeve. That way it makes sure that the armpit seam is totally aligned. Here you may have noticed that my front and back are different lengths and not lining up perfectly at the bottom. After this, I just gave the back a little trim and they were totally aligned again. Now that the sides are all cleaned up, we can add the bottom waistband to the bomber. I cut some knit tubing that fits comfortably around my hips, but is a little bit shorter in length than the actual bottom of the jacket. I pinned this right sides together along the center point of the jacket to make sure that it lays symmetrically and then started at one of the far ends, sewing it down with a zigzag stitch all the way around. After putting it into the machine, I pull on that part that I pinned that's along the center point of the back and use that to gauge where the knit needs to line up with the mesh so that the tension is even along the entire bottom. For the tubing, I usually cut it to be five inches wide, and that's just because when it's folded in half, you get two inches plus half an inch of seam allowance. Then I cut it to the length that is suitable for the item I'm trying to fit with. So when it comes to the wrists, I make sure it's comfortable around my wrists, can actually slide all the way up to the elbows because otherwise you can't roll up your sleeves, and then take that right sides together and sew it down along the short edge. Once that's done, I reach in, open up the seam with my fingers, and then fold the entire thing in half to hide away the seams. Now you can tuck that over the open end of the sleeve. I like to line up the seam that is on the cuff to the seam that is on the sleeve and then pin those all the way around right sides together even though on the cuff technically both sides are right sides. I usually start pinning at the seam and then do some stretching of the cuff all the way around so that I know where to pin the other one while keeping the tension even. Do a zigzag stitch all the way around the loop and that will sew the mesh sleeve to the cuff. Once all the zigzag stitching is done, flip the cuff downwards and now your cuffs are finished. The next step is to do the zippers. First, I open up the zippers completely and then assign them to each proper side of the jacket. Take the bottom waistband and fold it in half, then pin the zipper so that it starts at the fold. I make sure the raw edges at the bottom of the waistband are pointing downwards and then continue pinning all the way up the jacket. When you're pinning, you want to pin it so that the teeth side of the zipper is far away from the raw edge and touching the jacket. Once more on the other side, fold the waistband in half and then start the zipper at the bottom of the fold. Then make sure that the raw edges of that waistband are pointing downwards when you pin and go all the way up the jacket again. After I pin up both sides, I like to give it a zip up and zip down to make 
make sure that everything looks nice and even. You may have a little bit of extra fabric at the top depending on how long the zipper is. Don't worry too much about that as long as it's symmetrical, it's okay. The last step is to pull out the bottom pin on both sides of the waistband and that's just because we want to sew the zipper to the waistband without any fold in the waistband. So go down both sides with a straight stitch. Okay, now it is time to fold up the bottom waistband, tucking away the raw edges, pinning it down all the way and sewing it with a straight stitch. We save this one till last because it helps to hide away the raw edges of the bottom of the jacket and also the raw edges that are close to the zipper. To pin, I tuck in about a centimeter of the waistband fabric, bring it over so that it's lined up with the waistband fabric on the outside of the jacket and then add a pin right there. On the sides of the waistband that are touching the zipper, you'll have to fold in both sides Sides to make a folded corner. I like to fold the horizontal edge first and then tuck in the zipper side second. To sew, we're gonna go up beside the zipper, across the entire waistband, and then back down on the other side of the zipper. Use a straight stitch and don't be afraid to go nice and slow for this part because you want it to look super clean. It's a good idea to flip it over every so often to check that everything looks good on the outside before you keep going. Because if anything is going off track, it's better to spot it earlier on and stop stitching, fix it, otherwise you're going to wait all the way till the end to find out there's things you have to fix. From here I also added another straight stitch along the mesh fabric that's touching the zipper just to really fix it in place with the zipper and make sure that the seam lies nice and flat. Repeating on the other side I added that same straight stitch just a short distance away from the folded edge of the mesh so that I could help it be totally fixed to the zipper. And now for the collar! For collars I usually cut knit tubing that is three inches wide that way when it's folded in half you get about one inch of collar and half an inch to work with for seam allowance. I take this, fold it in half twice so that I'm bringing the two raw edges together and use a pair of scissors to cut out a slight curve that ends with a short edge. You can take this and pin it to the open collar at the top of the jacket. I always cut this white piece to just be a little bit shorter than the total circumference of the collar hole and that helps to give it a little bit of tension so that it looks good in the end. As per usual, whenever I'm sewing something with tension, I try to start with center points and that just helps me to make sure everything stays symmetrical. So I pin it once along the back and then add two more pins along the front. After that, I stretch it out evenly, pinning along the way so that it's going all the way around the collar. After everything was pinned, I actually re adjusted the pins a little bit. That was just so that I could flip up the collar and see how it looks. I'm gonna go ahead and add a zigzag stitch all the way around. Then, similar to what we did with the zippers, after I was done that zigzag stitch, I went once more time around with the straight stitch, sealing that mesh to the collar fabric all the way around to help it lie super flat. The last step on the jacket is to cut off any excess fabric that was near the collar, zip this thing up to make sure it zips up properly, and you're done! It is time to move on to the monogram. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I do my monograms and it's a bit of tips and tricks that I've accumulated over time. What I do is I find a font that I like. This one I just increased the zoom until it got to the size of Wendy that I appreciated. Then I maxed out the brightness, lay a piece of paper over it, and traced out with a pen all of the shapes. The tracing is done so I'm going to cut out all the letters with a pair of scissors. Grab the fabric that you would like to do the letters on. In this case it was a white faux fur fabric. Then flip the letters over so that they are mirrored and not the way they're normally supposed to be read. This is very important because if you skip this step, you're gonna end up with backwards letters. I traced around all of the letters and then started cutting all the way around. Since this is faux fur, I have to be really careful. With faux fur, you always have to cut only the backing and not the fur. So you keep having to slide the scissors in little by little to only cut the backing. And this is so that when you pull them apart, it doesn't shed all over the place and you're just separating them along the base where they're all attached. Once they're all cut out, you should flip them over and they should be reading properly at this point. We're going to glue them on to the back of my bomber. The glue that I use is called OK to wash it, so hopefully this is the right glue to be using on clothing. I lay out all of the letters and then go gently with the glue, not globbing on a lot, especially with mesh, because you don't want the glue to leak through and get all over the jacket. And my trick when it comes to taking away a letter but remembering where it's supposed to go is laying down a white piece of paper to match up with the exact corner that I need the letter to go back to. And that way when I put back the E, I just remember to lock it into that same corner and hopefully it won't have lost its spot. Let the whole thing dry overnight and it should be ready for you to wear. Hope you enjoy your brand new bomber. Yay, you made it to the end of the video. If you like it, let me know by hitting the like button. You can also follow me on Instagram. It's at with Wendy and I posted a couple more photos of the jacket there. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click that button. I upload new tutorials every week. Similar to this kind of style, I actually already uploaded a varsity jacket tutorial that has a monogram and leather sleeves. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye.